this is not a realistic rebuild. No, this is not a realistic rebuild. Just a little point out there. Um, make sure you guys slap a like on the video if you guys want me to do another rebuild. Comment down below what other teams you'd want to see. Uh, I haven't done a San Antonio Spurs one in a while. Maybe I'll do an Indiana Pacer one or something like that. I think it'd be kind of fun, but um, right now we're doing the Houston Rockets and we're looking at trading away Victor Oladipo, who is on an expiring contract, if you guys didn't know. Uh, I'm assuming that the Houston Rockets are just going to keep him in real life and just let him walk, keep that cap space open for a free agent of the future, which is actually a good idea because I know a lot of players really like to play in Texas and in Houston, very popular city, so um, they could potentially get a very good uh, free agent, whoever wants to sign there, get their own team, that'd be kind of cool, so, uh, but what I'm going to do is obviously trade him away. Um, we are looking at a lot of pretty good shooting guard options here with the Buddy Heald. Uh, we saw Zach Levine earlier on, Mitch Robinson, but we do already have Christian Wood and DeMarcus Cousins, so I don't really think I need a Mitchell Robinson. That would save us a lot of money, though, but uh, I don't think I'm going to do that one. <laughs> There's Karis LeVert in Indiana. I think Karis LeVert's going to play so well in Indiana. I know he just got recently diagnosed with some sort of thing. I don't know if that's going to hinder him the entire year or something like that, but I know he's had some sort of diagnosis happening when he got his physical done to for the trade. Uh, hopefully, you know, he's okay. Um, but yeah, this trade for Zach Levine looks really nice. Zach Levine is a player who, A, can definitely, you know, run his own show offensively and uh, still a player who can grow and uh, form a very good team with. So, Victor Oladipo in a first-round pick for Zach Levine, I don't think that's that bad of a trade. Now, when trying to get rid of John Wall and that humongous contract, I figured I'm going to have to throw a first-round pick in there just to get rid of him. So, with the plethora of future first-round picks that the Houston Rockets now have, I think I'm going to try to acquire a running mate, at least some sort of running mate to, to pair alongside uh, Zach Levine. When looking through these, we could get a new front court with Julius Randle and uh, Mitchell Robinson again. Here's a trade for Steven Adams. Not bad. Not what I'm looking for. And right here, ladies and gentlemen, the Toronto Raptors offer me Pascal Siakam for John Wall in a first round pick. Now, I know this is obviously, ne this would never happen ever, 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 ever in real life. But if you think about it, you know, maybe the Raptors somehow figured out, you know what, we're not good enough to win a title. We're going to blow up the team. So trading away for a future first round pick for a team that's going to be really bad. And, uh, you know, a player who can play right now in John Wall, you know, maybe they're going to start tanking and getting rid of Pascal Siakam would definitely be a good start to that. So starting the tank season for, for Toronto and we, I guess, now acquire uh, a really good forward, not a closer. We have Zach Levine for that, but a good two-way player in Pascal Siakam. So we have a great defender in Pascal Siakam. And we have our go-to scorer in Zach Levine, which I wish they would do uh, over there in Toronto. Now getting rid of or Eric Gordon's humongous, stupid, 55, nearly $55 million contract. I don't know who would sign a 31-year-old to a $55 million contract. That's absolutely crazy. Uh, I just dump him basically for cap space. And then I think one of the last things I do is go make sure... Look at my cap space for next year, guys. $41 million. I think that's perfect. We can sign a big-time free agent still. We still have Christian Wood under some contract years. Same thing with Zach Levine and all the other sort of non-essential guys we can get rid of, have on the bench, keep in the rotation, something like that. I think that would definitely be a good idea. Um, also, uh, I did trade for Norman Powell during this time as well. I think I'm going to get rid of him just because he has a player option at the end of this current year, which he's probably going to take. I don't need someone making, you know, $11, 12000000 million uh, coming off my bench. That's definitely way too much. So I'm just going to trade him for basically anything. Uh, so here's JJ Redick, who is on an expiring deal, who obviously plays the same position. Very, very, very good. They play shooter will probably play very well in the Houston Rockets sort of uh, play style. Um, so I like it really good. Also, another thing, if you guys haven't heard in the recent news, that uh, Isaiah Thomas is getting a lot of calls from a lot of teams that need help, and I think we're one of them. So, new starting point guard for our team, Isaiah Thomas. So now, our team is actually looking kind of nice. Uh, let's go to the coaching right here, and let's check it out real quick. So we have 
Isaiah Thomas, Zach Levine, I did sign Rondé Hollis Jefferson to a contract for one year just to be our, you know, defending small forward. Doesn't need a lot of ball touches. Uh, Siakam and Christian Wood at center. So you guys cannot tell me the starting five does not look kind of fire. This is kind of fire, not going to lie. Uh, I think we have Boogie off the bench with J.J. Redick, P.J. Tucker. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're looking really good. This, this actually might be a playoff contending team now. Do I, you know, am I trying to build a championship team? Am I trying to do this, trying to do that? No, I'm just trying to make, you know, the best case scenario for what I have in trading away one of the best players in the entire NBA. Uh, they traded away the best player, one of the best players in the NBA for, for Karis Levert slash Virgil Oladipo. Uh, I don't know why. I still say that the Houston Rockets got fleeced. Uh, the Brooklyn Nets have no depth. And, you know, Indiana and the Cavs got away with murder, it feels like, because they just got... Uh, way better, it seems like, for doing absolutely nothing, which is super crazy. Yeah, you guys saw that trade there on our rip, and they wanted me to trade uh, Zach Levine for Tyler Hero. I think if it was a longer rebuild, I think I would do that trade, because I really enjoy watching Tyler Hero play, but I think trying just to make, you know, the best team possible with the shortest amount of time, uh, it's probably the, the best thing to do. So, uh, as I was saying, I'm not trying to, like, build, like, a super title contender or this, that, or the other. I just want to make, you know, the best case scenario right now, having you know, a player like Zach Levine who can probably continue to develop into being, you know, a go-to option in the offense, and then also having a, you know, Pascal Siakam player who we've seen in real life not really be that closer for a team. He can't be that go-to guy. That can be Zach Levine for us, and even Isaiah Thomas obviously having a lot of, uh, you know, time being the go-to guy in Boston, having a lot of, you know, talent to be able to do that. So we have Zach Levine, Isaiah Thomas, uh, and then we have Siakam doing everything else on the defensive end, offensive end, guarding, you know, the Giannis is LeBrons of the world and whatnot. So our team's looking not, not too shabby. And then we have Christian Wood, who's looking to starting to be, you know, the next sort of big time player for that team. And really uh, probably going to win most improved player, in my opinion. He's looking really nice right now. Uh, I think, you know, I think that might be my early, super early uh, sort of guess on, on winning most improved player right now is, would be Christian Wood. Definitely for sure. He was kind of a player who came out of nowhere in, in, in Detroit and then came over to Houston. And now he's sort of, he's basically running the show right now since Victor Lodipo and John Wall haven't really been playing a whole lot. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see that. Yeah, but I did see that. Um, I think James Harden actually... I think he broke the record for most assists in a game for the Brooklyn Nets history. He did something like that. At least some some sort of record I remember for assists. I think he had 14 or 15 his first game and uh, already breaking records over there and used that in Brooklyn. That's super crazy. Um, uh, that's, that's definitely going to be really exciting to sort of see that sort of um, trio work out. Uh, it, it could just be a duo because... You know, who knows what's going to happen to Kyrie? Kyrie could, I, know, I keep hearing, you know, Stephen A. Smith and people like that. Oh, wow, he's a trade for Russell Westbrook. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm going to pass Russell. Thank you so much for the offer, but uh, I think I'm going to keep up with my guys. Actually, that would be a pretty cool idea to get Russell back in Houston after uh, James Harden gets traded. That'd be actually be kind of funny, but uh, no, I think that's a little bit too uh, unrealistic. Um what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, with Kyrie Irving and Stephen A. Smith saying that Kyrie Irving should just retire. I mean, that's a big possibility. Kyrie's definitely a, a player who would not surprise me surprise me at all if he did uh, end up retiring after the season or even during the season. Uh, for some reason, you know, he just he doesn't really seem all that interested in basketball right, so right now, which is okay. You know, he's a human being. He can do what he wants. Um, but very interesting to see that. Since it is halfway through the season, you guys know, oh, my God. <laughs> I think this is the first time I've ever, 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 ever seen the Sacramento Kings, if I'm not using them, be the first seed in the entire NBA. That's so crazy. Then the Grizzlies are second. That's so crazy. Well, in the Western Conference, at least they're number one. I don't know about the entire NBA, but we are definitely okay. It looks like we're a little bit out of the playoff spot right now. Um, again, I'm definitely not trying to make the playoffs at all. Uh, I'm not trying to tank either. I'm just trying to see how this sort of team plays out with Zach Levine and, and, and Pascal Siakam. We have the OKC Thunder, the worst team in the NBA. It kind of makes sense. Um, Indiana, pretty low. Chicago without Zach Levine is doing pretty bad. But wow, Victor Lodipo is actually playing pretty good. He's actually progressing too. He's up one overall. That's kind of cool. Um, let's see. Miami is always doing pretty bad, it seems like. We have the Sixers, the Hawks, the Celtics, Toronto. Wow. See, for you people who may have, you know, 
will see me trade away John Wall. Be like, oh my god, that's such a lopsided trade. Blah 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 blah. They're second in the East, so uh, it looks like they are winning the trade. Anyways, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Then we have the guy who we're trying to face up against. It seems like James Harden. They, he's having a career low in points per game since 2011. Wow, that's pretty crazy. They are at the top of the Eastern Conference as well, so that's pretty terrifying. But uh, you know what? We're just trying to build the best team we possibly can. We're not trying to win a title. We're not trying to do anything crazy. We're just trying to build the best team. And if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, then uh, it sucks. But uh, uh, sure, I could obviously trade away like Pascal Siakam for like a crazy player or trail my first one picks or this out the other. But I'm trying to make it, you know, fair. I, I, I like doing unrealistic rebuilds, but fair, unrealistic rebuilds. I'm never someone who just tries, tries to like cheese the system and get all the same players and do all the same things. I always try to do, you know, something that's fair and new and fun. Um, we have a couple of uh, pretty good ones. I, Chris Boucher, I think that's how you pronounce the name. It's not Boucher, something like that. Uh, for Toronto, definitely has, definitely, definitely, definitely has a big case on being the most improved player in real life as well. Hey, you just wanted their 2K, but man, in real life, he's looking really good for Toronto. Uh, definitely a big, big, big surprise. So we have Zach Levine getting up with two overalls and uh, looking really good as our go-to scorer. Then we have Siakam going up with a couple overalls as well. Looking really good. I see it, Thomas, I told you guys, third best scorer on our team. He has, he has the sort of, uh, the resume, the, 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 the knowledge of being a great scorer in the NBA, obviously being the number one go-to guy in Boston for a while. He can definitely still get it done. So yeah, I actually really like our team, but, uh, we didn't make the playoffs. <laughs> As you guys saw there for a hot second, uh, didn't even make the playoffs. Let me know if you guys think this, this team would make the playoffs. I think it actually worked. I think it'd be not bad at all. Um, well, in the West, I don't know, maybe. Oh my god. <laughs> we have a big time upset here. That's crazy. Oh, I did forget to uh, make Clay Thompson injured and Spencer did when he injured. I always start injuries off whenever I do these rebuilds and I totally forgot to injure those guys uh, in the game, so my bad on that. They're a little bit uh, not so realistic, but then again, they did get out of the first round, and in the conference finals, we had the Battle of LA in the Boston Celtics and the uh, Milwaukee Bucks. Bucks picked up the finals, and Bucks beat the Lakers game seven. My God, Giannis, finals MVP. What happened? How did they lose this game? It just looks like not enough scoring. Oh my god, Drew Holiday. That's crazy. Oh my god. Giannis had... Oh. <laughs> if you lose to the Bucks with Giannis scoring nine points, you deserve to lose. That is... That... that You do not deserve a championship if Giannis scores nine points and you still lose. That's terrible. Um. Anyways. <laughs> we have the uh, lottery here. We do have the Pistons pick in quotations. Not really. I think it's lottery protected. So, I mean, it's, we're already, we're not going to get it. Yeah, they already have the second pick. We would have had the second pick, but, uh, you know, the sort of rules and things like that with the, the, the trade, that whatever, how that happened. Uh, I just signed some, like, of the coaching people right there. And going into the draft, um, I always usually try to snag someone from this draft class specifically because this draft class, whoever made it, made these guys OB, 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 OB. So I always try to at least snag someone from this draft class. So uh, I think I could probably get someone, maybe something else. Um, definitely not bad. Mm. You know what? I think I should probably just go with the draft pick. Like an actual draftable player. All these guys are just going to eat up caps with some space, which I need obviously for this offseason, trying to get starters and stuff. I mean, we do need to start in small forward, and OG wouldn't be bad, but I mean, we just got Pascal Siakam. I don't want to take the entire uh, Toronto roster, and that'd be kind of weird. Um, yeah, let's just see what I can do here for a trade. Um, we don't really have any players, but I can get a pick. So, what if I try to get at least like a top five pick? Let's see. Should I pick number five for our future first, right here? Then our current second round pick. Let's see if we can try to snag one of these. And we ended up not getting them at all. Uh, we did end up getting the Jazz pick, which I think was eighth. So we went from fifth or sixth all the way up to eighth, so it's not bad. Still a top ten pick. And we get a couple of good rookies looking here. We get uh, Usman, which is not bad. Sayur Williams, not bad. Josh Christopher. I'm definitely looking for a wing player because we definitely, as of right now, do not have any wings. I'm trying to think because we lost JJ. And we lost... Oh, obviously we have Zach Levine. That's about it. We, have, we need a starting small forward. We need a starting... 
Pascal at the power forward position, obviously having to worry about, um, you know, Giannis, Tatum, uh, whenever LeBron plays the four, uh, players like that, KD currently plays the four right now in the NBA, so having Siakam there sort of try to, uh, help out a little bit on that would be very, very, very helpful, so, yeah, I think we actually picked up the best available option right there, so I think yeah, keeping him on the wing is a perfect, uh, perfect, 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 perfect thing to do. Uh, I think we can probably trade away Clements for someone better, and, ooh, Chris Paul accepted his, that's pretty bad, okay, Drew, okay, Drew Holiday is, is not a bad option for our starting point guard, we can get Drew Holiday, Sacrofine, Pascal Siakam, that's not bad, that's not really a young pick I would want, but not terrible, um, we're gonna let Rondé walk, and, yeah, let's see what we actually need right now, oh, actually, I'm gonna clear cap space, <laughs> that's probably a, a smart idea as well. Zach and Daniel House, and basically we need two starters and an entire bench on this team. So, looking at the point guards here, uh, there's Lowry, not bad. Um, let's see, Lowry, Kawhi, we do need a small forward, there's Otto Porter. I just think Drew Holiday would probably be the best option for the first guy we try to sign. I think he's definitely going to be a guy who will sign with us no matter what, so... Uh, there is Spencer Dinwiddie as well, but again, you know, already a Nets player. We've already just sort of talked about the Houston and the Nets trade. I don't really want to steal them away. That might be kind of weird. Right here, though, is Devontae Graham and Lonzo Ball. Oh, man. I, 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 I think I need to try and snag a Lonzo Ball. I think that might be a good option right here. Let's see. Let's see. I think that's a pretty good option right there. So Lonzo Ball, if we can snag him, I know he's restricted, but I've gotten lucky before with restricted free agents. Let's see if I can get lucky again. Um, then Drew Holiday for sure. I think Drew is like the safest bet for getting a point guard. I think if Lonzo gets matched or declines, uh, I think Drew will definitely sign with us. So if I can do like a small, like a really small, like two-year deal, he's just right now at the edge of his prime. So maybe getting him a, a, giving him a two-year deal will uh, ease it a little bit. And then I would sign another point guard, but I think we definitely need a starting small forward, so um, I don't think we're obviously going to be able to get Kawhi or DeMar, but uh, looking at the options we have here, I think, honestly, Otto Porter being a 3 and D guy who doesn't need the ball in his hands a lot to be able to be effective will be very very good for our team. He's a player who can get his own bucket when he needs to, but most of the time we'll be standing in the corner hitting threes, defending players, because we have Zach, Pascal, hopefully either Lonzo or or Drew Holiday doing work as well. Christian Wood's a good offensive player too, so uh, I think Otto Porter might be a, a good uh, 3 D option for us, so let's see if we can get lucky, 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 and presto, voila. Lonzo actually decides to sign with us, which is good. Uh, I'm going to take the chance. I know if you guys don't know, well, I know if you don't know, uh, if this doesn't happen, uh, Lonzo could get matched and we lose Drew Holiday right now, so let's hope that doesn't happen. Let's hope Lonzo signs with us and it looks like he does, so thank God the Pelicans want to get rid of Lonzo somehow. I feel like Lonzo's one of the easiest players to get in unrestricted free, and sorry, in restricted free agency in 2K. It seems like the Pelicans don't really want him all that much. So we have our starting five now of Lonzo Ball, Zach Levine, Arbiter Jr., Pascal Siakam, and Christian Wood. We have a rookie coming off our bench with some other pretty good guys as well. Uh, we still need backups for these guys too. Uh, I think I'm gonna make Zaire uh, a shooting guard or small forward, or, or maybe I already did that. <laughs> uh, we need a backup point guard, and there are a couple good looking ones right now. TJ McConnell would be pretty good. Uh, he's definitely a, a pretty smart, 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 smart point guard for sure. I think he'd be pretty good running our bench. For Uh, I use 
usually always go with uh, Willie Leonard Gomez. I always feel like he's not too bad of a backup. He's a good stretch big who can rebound pretty well, uh, can score the ball. So obviously with the Houston Rockets sort of go-to scoring uh, sort of ways they always have, they always love to score the ball as quickly and best as they can. So obviously getting Willie Leonard Gomez will definitely make that a priority. So not looking too bad. Uh, it looked like DJ McConnell declined us, so that's pretty heartbreaking. But I think we're going to grab a Chris Dunn here. Again, a very cheap contract as well. Don't want to keep him for too long. Don't need to sign him to a big long-term deal because obviously this is only going to be the last season we try and do this. So I think we have the entire bench already. I just need to sign some of the uh, like older vets to be able to you know, bench warm and stuff for the entire year. So I'm liking this team. I'm liking this team a lot. We have our three-headed monster with, well, I guess four-headed monster if you really want to put in Christian Wood and Lonzo Ball together in there with, with Zach Levine and Pascal Siakam. I got Otto Porter Jr. a good uh, starting small forward position. Our bench is not bad. I definitely just want to try to make the playoffs, which I think we will. I think we'll definitely be a pretty good playoff team. Uh, right now, I think we're 11th in power ranking, which isn't bad. Uh, definitely, definitely, definitely above average for sure. So we have Lonzo, like I said. Zach Levine, Otto Porter, Pascal Siakam, and uh, Christian Wood. Our bench is actually looking a lot better than I thought it was going to be, that's for sure. But yeah, wow, the Rockets springing back very quickly. Uh, it seems like, again, I hate what Houston did in real life, just shooting away James Harden for uh, uh, Karis Levert. I think definitely, definitely, definitely they had Ben Simmons in the back. They just wanted more for ben, with Ben Simmons, and I think uh, Philadelphia probably pulled out uh, too soon for Houston, and they probably just went with the next best thing, or I don't know, James Harden's first destination, which he probably wanted to be in Brooklyn the most, which uh, kind of, you know, pleased the superstar, it seems like, all the time, so uh, obviously with pleasing James Harden in his request, uh, going to Brooklyn, they had to take the best offer, and I guess Brooklyn was just saying, hey, we'll just give Karis Harden some picks, so I guess that's all they really got. So uh, I'm just going to uh, skip the simulation here and just sort of go right into the halfway point of the uh, the season here. Alrighty, alrighty. Uh, definitely a lot of <laughs> nice, 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 nice teams up here. We have the Mavericks first overall in the Western Conference. Looking like a th pretty much the same team, but kind of different. Definitely some different role players and whatnot. Um, we have the Phoenix Suns not struggling anymore. That's definitely good. And us at the field fourth seed, I'm sorry, the fourth seed, looking really good, our guys are, are getting better and better, I, that's why I wanted to sign sort of younger uh, players just to sort of build around, obviously not as good and young as the uh, New Orleans Pelicans with that, that, that Zion, not, yeah, Zion and Brandon Ingram, tandem they got going, we have the fully healthy Warriors looking pretty good back in full health, um, there are a lot of teams at the bottom though, the Lakers are not sitting very pretty, we have the sort of uh, decline of LeBron James, it seems like it's very terrifying, definitely could happen anytime soon, uh, the team's actually not bad, but, you know, Portland's down there as well, the Kings, who were the ones in last year for a hot minute, were down there as well, um, oh wow, okay, so here's the Nets, uh, fourth overall, and the Cleveland Cavaliers are number one in the Eastern Conference, they're actually number one in the whole, uh, uh NBA, so, uh, <laughs> big ups to, uh, you know, Cleveland, big ups to you guys, definitely looking good in real life too, and the Atlanta Hawks are looking good as well, so that are the conference standings, so let's go ahead and jump right into the rest of the simulation, and go for the playoffs, um, here are some of the awards, I know no one really cares about the awards, I really don't, I really just skim past these things kind of fast sometimes too, Jonathan Isaac, Defensive Player of the Year, definitely can be for sure, for sure, 
coaching settings and defensive, defensive, defensive matchups will definitely, 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 definitely help me out a lot, a lot, a lot. Always gotta make sure that I, you know, tighten up the rotations. Need to be better on the defensive end. Making sure the right matchups are going on. I think definitely getting Lonzo on Murray for sure is what I want. And then Otto Porter Jr., my God, he is <laughs> almost a 90 overall. That's so crazy. Um, definitely need to definitely need to put Siakam on him, and obviously I'll get the ones like, uh, you know, making sure the lineup performance is good, um, making sure everything else is looking okay. Steven Silas, the way he's progressing is actually really nice. He has an A-plus in offense and B in defensive stats. That's really good. He's definitely progressing really well. Uh, always gotta play hard. Always gotta, you know, crash some run. Okay, I think we are ready. I think we should definitely push this game to at least game seven. There's no way we get swept. There's no way. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, guys, um, a team of Zach Levine and Pascal Siakam, Lonzo Ball, Christian Wood, uh, isn't good enough. <laughs> so that 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 really hurts me. I could definitely easily go another year and probably win a championship because for some reason 2K just loves messing everything up for no reason. Like I said before, I have such bad teams winning titles, and then teams like this who are really good and well put together don't do anything. So big ups to the uh, Denver Nuggets. They are, you know, better than us, but dude, for some reason, Pascal Siakam is, is a curse in, in 2K and in real life. It seems like he can't get it done either, but we have the Atlanta Hawks winning the championship, and wow, Trey Young averaging 15 assists in the finals. Uh very, very, very dominant year for the Hawks. That's super cool. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, uh, crazy trade with James Harden and the Houston Rockets. Let me know down in the comments what other teams I should rebuild. And uh, yeah, make sure you guys check out my other content, my NFL role-playing NBA content. And I'll see you guys in my next video very, 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 very soon. Please like, subscribe, and